Daniel? Um, you know what? I'll try it without it. Don't worry. You got it? Give it one second. Daniel chapter 3. We're going to Daniel chapter 3 this morning. I'm going to do a little bit of reading this morning. Did y'all read y'all's Bible this week? Don't tell on yourself. We're going to read some this morning. Everybody have a say amen. amen. Verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof was six cubits. And he set it upon the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together princes and governors and captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and all the rulers and providences to come in dedication to the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains and judges and treasurers and counselors and sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together to the de dedication of the image of Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald, a herald cried out to you, it's commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of a cornet, a flute, a harp, a sackbut, a psaltery, a dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you'll fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship it shall in that same hour be cast in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore at the time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore at, the, at a certain at wherefore time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said unto the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou king hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, It is true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, if, if you be ready that what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image that I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you will be cast in that same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who, who is this God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to, to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, say, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship thy golden image, which thou hast set up. Then, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of visage and charge against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded them that they sh should heat up the fir fir furnace one seven times more, and it, would, it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats 
and their hosen and their hats and in their garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king commanded commandment was urgent, the furnace it furnished exceeding hot and the flame of the fire slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Let's pray. Father, we are just so grateful that we can come to hear your word. Speak to our hearts. Lord God, we pray that you would place a mirror in front of us. And if there's anything in us, Lord, that you need to change, help us, Lord God, to submit to that change. Write your word upon the tables of our hearts, Lord God Almighty. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for grace. We thank you for your loving kindness that draws us to repentance, Father. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that you would just have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, pre prepare every heart, every mind, open up every ear and every eye. Let us receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me give you a backstory of this. So, the King Nebuchadnezzar had just sieged Judah. Israel and they conquered the land and ruled over it. and this king was an idol worshiper he was from Babylon and at the beginning of this King Nebuchadnezzar told his master of of eunuchs to bring children of Israel that he picked he said go out and pick the best ones go pick the ones that are and it literally says in, in chapter one uh, and I'll go there and read it. it literally says in chapter one go and pick the the good looking ones and uh, let's see here. And the king spake to Ashpenaz, the master of eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children whom had no blemish, that were well favored and skillful in wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability to stand in the king's palace and whom they teach and learning the, the tongue of the Chaldeans. And then it, verse, it says right here, now among these children were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Now they changed their name and gave them, gave them uh, na different names. The prince of the eunuchs gave names and he gave unto Daniel, the name Balthasar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, uh, Meshach and to Azariah Abednego so the people I just read about their, their Jewish names were were what? Hmm? Hananiah Mishael and Azariah now they are called Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego so I'm giving you that background because I want you to understand what was going on so so this this man this king he goes and sends for the people in israel and the and the children and he says go go bring me some real smart ones go bring me some 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 real well favored ones that can stand in my palace that we can teach some things to and that they can they can function in the king's palace and so he does and he selects them and if you read chapter one and chapter two in chapter, I believe it's 1, verse 19 or so, he says that these children, these men, were 10 times better than anyone he found in Babylon. This is how, how much favor that God had upon their life. How many need the favor of God? Amen? And, and, and the Bible says, if you read it, that they were promoted over a certain area. Over certain provinces, and we just read that that certain certain people came to the king, and they were. It sounded kind of like a little bit of jealousy. In verse um, verse eight, he said, "Wherefore certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews." Now, when I read that, it said certain Chaldeans, and I wanted to say, and certain haters came near and started accusing Jews. How many know there's a lot of haters? And they spake to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Uh-oh, they're, um, let's just say they're sucking up. And the king has made a decree to every man. Well, anyway, he goes down. He said, there's certain Jews that you set over affairs of the province of Babylon. You set them over and they're, they're, they're ruling things and they're still not obeying you. Then, 
So we get to chapter 3 where where King Nebuchadnezzar sets up a 90-foot idol for everybody to worship. So I got a question for you this morning. This morning I'm preaching on I will, we will not bow. This morning we're preaching on we will not bow. And the Lord gave me, now, so anything, I I do this every Sunday, anything that's said this morning, that God gave me this message last Saturday, probably about five in the morning or so. And it wasn't for last Sunday, it was for today. So whoever's here and whoever's watching, this is for you. There's no mistake that you're here this morning because God wants to speak something specific to you that, that, that could change the actual Uh, the things that are happening in your life. God wants to change something in you and change the projection of where you're going. See, he he promoted them and gave them favor in in, in front of a a, a idol-worshiping king, but God still wasn't done. Just because you're in a good place and just because that God has been blessing you and you're doing okay, doesn't mean that God's done promoting you. Amen? Amen? God can con- continue to lift you higher and lift you higher. And, and sometimes it is in the physical and we thank God for those promotions. But sometimes he's wanting to promote you and lift you higher in the spirit realm. And if we get stuck in our religion and we just do the same things and say the same uh, uh, words and the same prayers. God's, the, the scriptures clear and says, don't think by much speaking that you're going to gain much. There's got to be some real engagement of heart. It can't just be repetition. And these men right here were in a strange land. They were in Babylon, but they knew the one God of the Bible. And they saw this whole idol erected. And all of a sudden, remember, they had favor. They had position. They, they were over the province. They were over a certain piece. And they were risking it all. And they said, if you don't bow... Not only are we going to strip you of your favor, not only are we going to strip you of your title, not only are we going to strip you of your finances, but we're going to kill you too. Now, I don't know how many of us have ever had that kind of encounter where you know that you know that you know that God has made you and brought you to a place of deciding. Are you going to worship that? Are you going to worship me? So I've got a question for you this morning. It says right here, and this was their response, we will not bow. But let me ask you a question. What is causing you to bow? You're like, well, I don't, and I was going to bring up one of Neil's toys this morning, stick it up here. And, and you know, I'm like, what would cause you to bow? What is causing you to bow? And, and, and yes, for the most part, most, most of us don't have idols in our life. We don't have idols in our homes. We don't set up things and bow down and worship them. But what is causing you to bow? Maybe it's not a physical idol. Maybe it's not a 90 foot step. But what idols are causing you to bow this morning? See, an idol is anything that you put in the place of God. Anything that you put number one before him, that's an idol, right? So it doesn't have to be a statue. It doesn't have to be a false god. Idols today are things that you put before God. It could be your job put before God. It could be your children. It could be your position, your money, your finances, your wallet. It could be your husband. Idol, your significant other, idol, your wife, girlfriend, all of the above, idols. And it could be yourself. See, I I don't know who it was, but I think my wife reminded me of it uh, several times a while back. But taking, you literally take God off the throne and put something else there when you make these decisions. And that's an idol. And God wants to challenge you this morning and and call you higher this morning to to address some things that you have been, maybe you don't want to admit it, but let's be real this morning. We've been taking God off the throne in some areas of our life. 
Maybe putting other things before God. God, See, God will tell you, hey, hey, this is wrong and this is right. But you'll sugarcoat it for family or friends or your children. Because I don't want to offend them. I don't want to offend people either. But if you love somebody, you got to tell them the truth. Now you got to tell them in love and you can't, you know, I'm not talking about beating somebody down, but you got to tell them the truth. You can't just let them stay in their sin and stay in their filth and be like, you're okay. God still loves you. He does. You're absolutely right. But we got to call people out. I, I've said it before. I'm not, I'll say it again. I'll say it a billion more times. I'm not calling you out this morning. I'm calling you up. Let, let me say it better. The Lord's not calling you out this morning. He's calling you up. There's too many churches that continue to feed milk and honey and keep people immature and babies. And when warfare comes and when struggle comes and when problem comes, they can't handle it. and They don't have any strength because they haven't been taught to fight. It's all easy. It's all nice. It's all riding unicorns and daisies and tulips and rainbows. But how many know sometimes there's warfare in your life? Sometimes the enemy's coming against you from all angles. Maybe sometimes head on. Sometimes he's trying to get you from the back. Sometimes he's coming after your children. And if everything is just sunshine and rainbows, I don't know if about you. I've never hit somebody with some flowers. You know, it might just make somebody upset. But this is warfare sometimes. See, I want you to notice something. And, 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 and this jumped out to me off the page. I've, I've read the scripture. I don't think I've ever preached on it. But in verse 5, it says, at what time? Say every time. It says, at, in verse 5, at what time you hear the sound? And it lists all these instruments. And the Lord began to speak to me. He says, the enemy is trying to condition and has conditioned some people so that when they hear something or they see something or that person in their life shows up again, they bow. They're conditioned. And this is what King Nebuchadnezzar was trying to do was condition the people all around that every time something happened, every time the sound came forth, they would bow. It was a conditioned response. And how many know if you look in your life right now, every time that person says that one thing, you're like, mm, you know, <laughs> or every time somebody talks about this or that. So, so for some people, it's like, don't be talking about my mama, you know, whatever. Some people, it's like every time somebody talks about my kids, they could be like with horns, my little angel, right? But you get upset and inside you're just, mm, fighting mad. Every time something happens in your life, is there, is there, is there a, a sound? Is there a person? Is there a happening? Is there an instance? Is there something that will drive you to take Jesus off the throne and put yourself or your problem or your issue or your giant or your problem right back on it? Is there anything in your life that that does? Amen. And the Lord is, is calling us higher this morning, calling us deeper, calling us to consecration and to holiness, true holiness. Amen. That we separate ourselves from certain things and quit giving ourselves excuses for idols. And I know that this is maybe a hard word, but I love you. I love you. When I get to heaven and I pray, y'all pray for me that I make it. Right. Because even Paul says, I pray that that even after all this preaching, that I don't fail and come short. The Apostle Paul said that. So when I make it there, I want to be looking. Oh, here they go. Here they go you know, and see y'all. Why? Not because I was like, oh, it's OK. Stay right there. You're OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. No. I love you too much to leave you where you're at. Look, God will accept you just how you are, but he loves you too much to leave you just how you are. Amen. But every time, church, every time, he said, every time you hear this sound, I want you to bow. And the enemy is blowing trumpets in your ear every time with a person. 
Every time that person comes around, you get frustrated or you fall back into sin. Every time that person says something, it might be a family member. Do you know that one family member that gets on your nerves and then every time y'all talk, y'all fight? I know there's one. And all of a sudden, y'all just, ah, and y'all get to the loud, and, and it's a compete, right? And all of a sudden, they're like, people around y'all that, that don't know you, like, I thought, they, have a, they have a bumper sticker about Jesus on their car. Are you sure they're saved? You're, right, you're going off, and words are coming out that sailors don't say. Come on. I know that I'm talking to some people that have uh, struggled Let's put it that way. I'll put it. Amen. Amen. But every time. And the Lord wanted to unveil and unmask the enemy's intentions and tactic, tactic this morning because you've been having the same fight and the same struggle and tripping over the same rock and the same stick and having the same issue over and over and over in your life without recognizing King Nebuchadnezzar's all he's doing is blowing a trumpet and causing you to bow. All he's doing is making you bow and making you bow and making you bow over and over every time to fall again, to compromise. Big word, scary word. But that's what we do. We compromise the convictions. We compromise what God is calling us to do. We compromise the, the, the holiness that God wants in our lives. And we allow these things to happen. What's causing you to bow this morning? Is it people? Is it their actions or their opinions? Sometimes at work, it's difficult to be the man of God or the woman of God you're called to be. If it's not a popular thing. Everybody, especially, out, you know, in oil field and car business, same thing. It's surrounded by people saying this and that. And they're saying jokes and you don't, <laughs> what's wrong with you? You know, they look at you a certain way and. They look down on you a certain way because you're not in the, in the crowd and you're not laughing with everybody and joking with everybody. But you're not of that world anymore. You're not of that clique anymore. You shouldn't participate in that mess anymore. But sometimes we say, you know what, God? I, 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 nothing, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not joining in, but I'm not walking, you know. Come on, church. Maybe it's people at work. Maybe it's people at home. Maybe it's people at church. Okay, ouch. I mean, let's go there with it real quick. Maybe, maybe that idol is sister, mm, you know, sister must be nice. Or, 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 or you know, brother, uh, brother jealousy or brother envy or, Maybe that's the idol that's in your life. Every time you get together with somebody, all y'all do, let's pray for Sister Sonko because I, you know what I heard? And then phew, gossip. That's your idol. You just go off at the mouth and you start talking about people. Let, 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 me, let me let everybody that don't know a little secret. If you want to talk about somebody, make sure they're present. Otherwise, it's gossip. Oh, but I'm not saying their name. Everybody knows who you're talking about. Quit trying to use gray areas. Gossip. Slander. And God's asking you, why? Why? Why Why are you doing that? How's that help you? How's that bless you? You want to truly pray for somebody to come out and whatever you're talking about, if they're truly struggling, then hit your knees in the prayer closet. You ain't got to talk to sister so-and-so and, 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 and brother so-and-so about it. Hallelujah. What is causing you to bow this morning? What has been causing you to bow last week? What has caused you? Let me, let me, let me say, because I, I hope you're not stuck on the bow thing. But what is causing you to compromise this morning or last week? Because if you think that, oh, I've got it. I've, I've got it made. I do nothing wrong ever. The devil is a liar. We've all come short of the glory of God. We've all fallen short. Me, you, everybody has fallen short. But that doesn't give us a license to stay there in a fallen condition. That's why Jesus came. 
That's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why Jesus allowed himself to be crucified and to be whipped. is so that he could take all that blood and apply it to your life. So that you don't have to stay in your condition. Or maybe this morning in verse 6 it talks about the fire. They threaten them. If you don't bow, we're going to throw you in fire. So maybe there's some threats in your life that are causing you to bow because maybe it's not an idol that you're afraid of or that you're worshiping or it's all about you. Maybe the, the threat is what's causing you. Maybe the threat of trouble. I've heard of people and I know people that stop living for God or stop living hard after God because every time I, I start praying and getting in my prayer life and every time I start getting in the Word and start doing well, I get trouble. So I stop. Every time I start getting fervent for God and doing something and witnessing and telling people the testimony and going with the gospel and it starts getting struggle and then I stop and slow down and the devil puts you in a cage. Because the threat of a fiery furnace, we begin to get fearful and stop doing what we're supposed to be doing. Maybe the warfare is too much, so we compromise. Maybe a fear of rejection of people, so we compromise. Maybe fear of people, so we bow. Maybe the struggle. They had a promotion. They had status. They had money. They had everything. But I don't want to struggle. I've been there. I've struggled. I've lived paycheck to paycheck. I, I've been on food stamps. I've been on this and that. I, I've done all this and I don't want to struggle no more. So I will compromise so I don't have to. Church, I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up. The Lord's not calling you out. He's calling you up. And if you feel like he's calling you out, then receive it. Amen. Amen. The Lord is exposing the enemy's tactics and revealing hidden idols in our lives. Removing all excuses to be delivered. And the great news is, church, is all we have to do is come in repentance. Amen. Forgive me, Father. I've sinned. Forgive me, I, I've come short. But repentance is not saying I'm sorry and remorse for getting caught. Repentance is stopping and going a different direction. Stopping and continuing to follow after God instead of having idols and compromise in our life. Say, somebody say, we will not bow. Look at your neighbor and say, I, we will not bow. Declare it over your family. Declare it to one another. We will not bow. Amen. I don't feel any, you know, any fighters in here. We will not bow. What is that? What is that? We will not bow. Y'all are looking at each other all sweet and stuff. You know. The enemy is attacking you, and you're like, we will not bow. I mean, if, I mean, so I believe that about Sister Jackie. Cause, yeah, she'd be like, we will not bow. And, you know, don't test her, because even in that we will not bow, whoosh, you know. But be careful. Be careful. It's some quiet ones. But you, there, if there's some fight in you and, and you're tired of the enemy causing you to bow and causing you to compromise and falling into certain traps, you should be like, we will not bow. I'm not going to surrender no more. My life, my salvation, I won't surrender anything. We will not bow. This is the attitude that these men have. We will not bow. Doesn't matter if we lose our position. Doesn't matter if we lose our money. Doesn't matter if we lose our promotion. It doesn't matter if you throw us in the fire. We will not bow. You got to declare it, church. And I love their spirit. I love their attitude. And this is one thing that the church of today has to catch. And in verse 16, he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, Abednego. You ought to catch that. Never mind. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so... Our God, whom we serve, who do you serve this morning? Is there anything greater than our God? So I'm going to read that again. Our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. 
Church, I, I, I know that sometimes, I'm going to sound like a broken record sometimes, but church, do not accept where you're at. Don't accept the struggle that you're in. Don't, don't forget the God that you serve this morning. He is all, all, not just mighty, he is almighty, right? King of kings, Lord of lords, he's creator of the universe. And you are a child of God. Will we accept less? Listen, I'm not born into royalty in the physical. My father is not a king in the physical. He doesn't reign over a certain kingdom. He is, does not have a throne. And he was not born with all this. But can you imagine? I don't know many kings. Being the son of a king. I don't be walking around like I own the place. I'm already confident. Right? I'd be walking around like I owned everything. I would not accept no for an answer. I would not accept I can't for an answer. I would not accept, oh, we want to help you, but we can't. No, 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 no. You don't understand. My father, the king, gives me access, gives me authority. I can. I'm not going to accept being less than. Are you? See, the Lord is calling us, church, to realize who you are in the kingdom. You have authority that every step that you take, you can claim for the kingdom of God. You have authority to command the enemy out to declare and rebuke and to deliver people, to heal, to lay hands on the sick that they would recover. You have that authority that the Lord has given you. So many people today say, can you pray for me? Not knowing they have the authority to pray for themselves. I, I, get, I get the sentiment. I will pray for you. Please request it. That's not what I'm saying. But, but go hit your knees too. Okay? Just because brother so-and-so, can he knows how to pray. I, I, I find those people that know how to, how to get in the throne room. Help me in prayer. But I'm not going to let you pray while I stand here and watch Netflix and stay in my problem and stay in my issue. I'm going to pray too. I'm going to get in my word too. I want to know the word too. I want to get in prayer too. I want to get into the king's presence too. In verse 16 and 17, he says, the God we serve is able. How many know he's able? See, you, I, all of us will say, I know he's able. But sometimes we don't believe him enough to ask for it. We, we, we just, I know you're able, Lord, but if it's your will for me to just struggle, I'll stay right here. Where do you get that from? Just because they're in the fiery furnace. See, they didn't get put in the fiery furnace because they were struggling based on bad decisions. All right, that might hit... They were put in a fiery furnace because they were standing for the things of God. Not because of they made, you know, oh, I'm struggling and the, the enemy's against me. And it was all because of the decisions you made. Don't blame God or the enemy for that. That was your decision. But if you're in the fiery furnace because you're standing for the things of God, you can say, my God who I serve, he's able to deliver me. And not only is he able, but you can declare he will. That's how confident they were. They said, King, you can throw us in the fire furnace. And the God that we serve, he's able to deliver us. And not only is he able, but he will. But just so that you know, we're not doing it just for what he does for me. Even if he doesn't, we will not bow. Even if he doesn't deliver me out of this problem, we will not bow. See, church, how many of us surrender and bow and struggle and compromise because we serve God with a contingency? Lord, I'll serve you as long as everything's going on good in my life. I'll serve you as long as, as, as you keep uh, so-and-so in line and so-and-so in line and my pocket's full and my bank account full. I'll serve you and I won't lose my marbles and I won't get in the flesh and all that stuff. As long as you do this, I'll serve you. We have contingencies on God. A little asterisk. I'll serve you, but let's negotiate. But they said, even if he doesn't do it for me, 
Can you say that, church, this morning? Can you put it in yourself? Can you declare it right under the tables of your heart? Lord, I will serve you no matter what I'm facing, no matter what the enemy is, no matter how my finances look, no matter how my health is, no matter how much struggle, trial and tribulation, or fiery furnace I'm in, I will serve you. And I know you're able. And I know you can deliver me. I know you're able. But even if you don't, I still won't bow. I still won't compromise. I still won't release the covenant that you've given me and that I've agreed to. Church, God is calling us up. But if not, I will. we will not bow, church. And I've got a whole lot more, but I believe the Lord is landing this plane. But here's the good news. In the fire... King Nebuchadnezzar goes and he looks in the fire and he says, hey guys, uh, didn't, didn't we throw three of them in there? I, I'm looking in the fire right now and, and we threw them bound in there and, and, and they, were, they, were, they had their hands tied, but they're walking around in the furnace loose. And not only are they walking around in the furnace loose and they were tied, I don't get it, but there's a fourth one in there and that fourth one looks like the Son of God. See church, you can write it down. Trust in it, have faith in it, walk in it. That if you're in that fiery furnace and you're standing for the things of God, He will never leave you, never forsake you. Even if you're walking through hell's kitchen or hell's bedroom or whatever hell part of hell you're walking through, God will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you in it, right in it. Hallelujah. You know, there, there's a whole lot more in this chapter. I, the God started popping out so certain things. They, uh, in verse 21, he said they bound the men. And they bound them with their clothes. And they bound them with this and with that and with their garments. And I was like, why did you put that in there, Lord? And he says, I wanted you to know that they were clothed. And it spoke about something they put on their head. And, and the garment that they put on themselves. And the hosen that they put on their legs. And, and the Lord began to speak to me about the armor of God. See, they were fully dressed. They had their garments of praise and their garments of worship. And they would not bow because they had the armor of God on. So much so. Now here's, here's the key, church. God will deliver you. And God will be with you. But the way this story ends is this king that had a 90, 90 foot idol. And all this, this king that conquered Judah, this idol worshiping uh, uh, king says to them, this is the most high God. Because there's no other God that can deliver like this God. And, and he made a decree. Don't, don't, don't even talk bad about this God or about these brothers that serve this God. Don't even talk bad about him. See, that's what your testimony does, church. The enemy wants to shut you down and to keep you quiet and to keep you all soft-spoken and all that stuff. But the reality of it is your testimony, when you're going through a fiery furnace and when you're going through issues and you stand firm and say, I will not bow, not only will it bless you, and not only will the Lord promote you and lift you up, but also it will cause those unbelievers around you to show them who God truly is and what God can truly do and what kind of impact God can make on this world. It doesn't have to be a literal fiery furnace, but they came out. And the Bible says they didn't even smell like smoke and none of their hair was singed. Trust me, I know what it is to be singed. I burned half of his eyebrow and mustache, hair. We know what it's like playing with fire. Church. The Lord is calling us for no more compromise. I'm coming to a close. Calling us that we should not bow down any more to the enemy. Calling us out of these cycles of frustration. Cycles that every time that the enemy blows that little trumpet in your ear. That you get in the flesh. That you fall into sin. That you go back to that idol. That you go back to that problem. That you struggle again and you go back to that sin or that weight that so easily besets you. The Lord is calling us up this morning. Let's stand. Father God, we come before you.
Lord, we ask you to forgive us of all of our sins. You are merciful. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the cross, Father God. We ask you in Jesus' name to forgive us. We repent of all of our sins. Cleanse our soul of all evil thoughts, of all evil words, of all evil deeds. We come before you right now and ask you, Lord, to wash us clean of all unrighteousness, of all sin. And Lord, give us eyes to see that when the enemy, and ears to hear, that when the enemy is trying to blow a trumpet of compromise, trying to blow a trumpet for us to bow to an idol again, that we see him coming afar off, Lord, and we don't fall into that trap again. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord God, for a revelation. Thank you for changing our hearts. Thank you for changing our minds. We need you this morning. Have your way in this place. And in everyone say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen, amen. Go to somebody, tell them you love them, give them a big old hug in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for coming.